All right, week 16 continues on Sunday with Atlanta 10 and a half point underdogs in Kansas City to play the Chiefs. The Chiefs are 1 5 against spread in their last six overall. The over is 5 and 0 in the last five meetings between these two. Alex Mack, concussion. Julio Jones are big question marks for Atlanta. Falcons are 7 and 3 against the spread as a dog of 7 and a half points or more since 2009. Mahomes is 49 straight up, 29 and 18 against the spread, and he's 22 and 11 against the spread when he's not favored by double digits. Uh, Kansas City is 9 3 and 1 against the spread their last 13 at home. The Chiefs have won 22 of their last 23 games overall, including the playoffs. KC has won six straight games by six or less points. It's the longest streak of its kind in NFL history. The Chiefs have scored 20 plus points in 20 straight games. That's tied for the longest streak in NFL history. I like the Chiefs. I like the Chiefs to roll big in this. I see no way the Falcons keeping up, especially if Jones is out and especially if Mack is out. I think that's two big question marks and two big, big injuries that the Falcons won't be able to overcome against powerhouse like Kansas City. Chiefs to win and cover the spread. Chicago, seven point road favorites in Jacksonville to play the Jags. The Bears are 0 5 against spread their last five games as favorites. Chicago is 1 4 against spread as a road favorite. The favorite is 4 1 against spread in their last five meetings. The Bears have multiple injuries in their secondary and all across their offensive line. That could be a big issue, even though the Jags are a bad team. Chicago is 19 38 against spread on the road their last 57 such games. Jags are 47 84 against spread versus non divisional opponents since 2008. Jacksonville is 15 and 40 against spread versus NFC teams since 2007. Jags are a bad team. I think they've given up on the year. Gardner Minshew, what, what a just a disappointment last week. I thought they'd get a backdoor cover. Obviously not. They just got blown out. I like the Bears to win this game. Seven seems a little strong for me. I'd hesitate and take the points with Jacksonville, but take Chicago to win the game. I think that's more a four or five point win for the Bears. Cincinnati, seven point dogs in Houston to pay, play the Texans. The underdog is 4 0 against spread in their last four meetings. The road team's 4 0 against spread their last four meetings. The under is hit in the last five meetings between these two. Bengals are 2 and 8 against spread their last 10 versus Houston. Texans have won last three meetings. Did Cincy play their Super Bowl last week? <laughs> that was quite an effort they put in against Pittsburgh to get that win. Uh, Houston does own the league's worst defense, so can Cincy do anything as that? Cincy is 9-16 against spread after playing Pittsburgh. Deshaun Watson's 110.6 passer rating is the highest in NFL history by a QB on a team with a losing record, a sub-500 record, and that's a minimum 10 starts. That's just phenomenal, phenomenal stat right there in my opinion. Since he has scored less than 20 points 18 times since 2019, that's the most by any team in that span. As bad as Houston's been this year, I think Kuti and, and the rest of the Texans receivers could have a big game to Sean Watson. That passer rating, that stat right there, that tells you enough. All you need to know really about this game. I think Houston will win and I will take them, I will hesitate and take them to cover the seven point spread. Cleveland, the Browns, a chance to be tied with Pittsburgh for the AFC North lead if they can handle the Jets, who just won their Super Bowl last week with that big win over the Rams. The Browns are 1-6 against spread their last seven games versus AFC. The favorite is 10-1 against spread in their last 11 meetings. Cleveland's 2-5 and five against spread their last seven meetings. The Browns have won five of the last six matchups between these two. Under a 7-3 and three in the last 10 times these two teams have played. The Browns do not overlook the Jets. Do not overlook the Jets this week or they will bite you and get their second win of the season because I just don't think they want the number one overall pick. Cleveland, the first team in NFL history to have a negative point differential. Their point differential is minus six and 10 plus wins through the first 14 games of the season. That does not bode well for the playoffs, in my opinion. Baker Mayfield is 8-1 versus non-divisional opponents this year. I think the Browns should win this game. They should cover the spread. I'm a little bit worried about a letdown or a trap game here for Cleveland, but I think they have enough talent to take care of the Jets. One of the, the games I was looking forward to for so long until this recent streak by Pittsburgh. The Colts are in Pittsburgh to face the Steelers. Pittsburgh is one point 
home favorites. The Colts are 4-0 against spread their last four road games. Steelers are 0-4 against spread their last four overall. Home team is 5-1 against spread in their last six matchups. Colts are 1-4 against spread their last five games in Pittsburgh. Indy is 1-4 against spread their last five meetings. The Steelers have won 13 of the last 15 games between these two teams. The over is 5-2 at the last seven meetings. The over is 4-0 their last four matchups in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh has lost three straight and two of those losses were to teams with losing records after an 11-0 start. Very disappointing for the Steelers. If Browns win and Steelers lose, they'll be tied for the division lead like I just mentioned in the previous game. Will the Steelers be motivated after getting embarrassed by Cincy last week? We'll see, or do they have the offensive ability to even do it now? The Steelers are 36 and 21 against spread at home in December since the year 2000. Pittsburgh has scored less than 20 points in four straight games for the first time since Big Ben was a rookie in 2004. Phillip Rivers has a 47 and 24 straight up record in his career as a starter in December and January games. No team in NFL history has lost four games after starting the year 11 and 0, which is what Pittsburgh could be doing this week. And I think they will be doing this week. The last time the Colts beat the Steelers without Peyton Manning as their starting QB was Mark Herman in week eight of 1984. Big Ben has a sub 90 passer rating in five straight games. That's tied for the longest streak in his career. I think Indy goes in this one of my favorite bets of the week. I think the Colts will go in there and dominate Pittsburgh this week. I think this is a much greater point differential. I see Indy winning this one by four to six, four to seven points in this game. New York Giants are in Baltimore to face the Ravens. Baltimore's 8-0 against spread their last eight December games. Baltimore's 4-0 against spread their last four overall. The home team's 4-0 against spread their last four matchups. The favorite is 4-1 against spread their last five meetings. Will either Marcus Peters or Jimmy Smith return at cornerback for the Ravens this week? Calais Campbell, he's expected to return for Baltimore as well. That could be big news for Baltimore and bad news for the struggling Giants. The Ravens are 13-20 against spread as favorites of 7.5 or more since 2010. That number's sitting at 9.5 right now. Uh, the Ravens have the second highest point differential this year with a plus 116. And Baltimore's on pace to become the first team to average 170 plus rushing yards per game in two straight seasons since Chicago did it from 1983 to 1985. The Giants have put up less than 20 points in four straight games and eight times this year they have failed to score 20 points. I think this game gets ugly fast. Baltimore's got a lot to play for. They're in danger of missing the playoffs. Miami already took care of business even though they didn't cover that spread for me yesterday. A little disappointed in that, but Miami got a big win. Huge win for them to help them get that much closer to a playoff berth. I like Baltimore to run away in this game big time. I don't think this is close from the get-go. Carolina at Washington. The football team is one point home favorites. Panthers are 6 0 against spread their last six road games and their last six games as a road underdog. Carolina's 8 1 against spread their last nine games as an underdog. Washington is 5 0 against spread their last five overall. The underdog's 8 2 against spread the last 10 meetings. The under is hit in their last five meetings in Washington. Will either start back play for their respective teams. Christian McCaffrey and Aaron Gibson, the two star backs, they're both questionable. Gibson has been suffering from the turf toe, obviously. McCaffrey, everybody knows his issues all season long. He's only played like three, four games all year, something like that. So that'll be a big determinant factor in this game. Eight of the Panthers, 10 losses have been by one possession. The most such games in the NFL. That's a crazy stat to me. I think Carolina might be able to do enough here to get that win and kind of get out of that streak of losing such close games. I like Carolina to win and cover the spread. Denver on the road to fit in LA to face the Chargers. Denver's 8-1 against spread their last nine games following an against spread loss, which was last week. Chargers are 1-6 against the spread their last seven games versus the AFC. The underdog is 5-1-1 one one their last seven meetings. Broncos are 4-1 and one against spread their last five matchups. Denver is 7-2, their last nine meetings in LA. That's straight up. The road team is 13-6-2 against spread their last 21 matchups. 
Justin Herbert is one of four players and the only rookie with a 65 plus completion percentage and 27 plus TD passes in their first or second season in the NFL, in the history of the NFL. And he is the only rookie to put up them numbers. The Chargers are also one of only two teams in NFL history to lose three games that they led by 17 plus points in a single season. So the Chargers, they are the Atlanta Falcons of the AFC. I think Denver can take care of business as an underdog and pull the upset. Not really a big upset in my mind. These two teams are pretty even. Just a rookie quarterback like trying to get wins instead of close games or suffering comeback defeats to the other team. I think Denver wins and covers the spread in this one. LA Rams, one point favorites in Seattle. This one could take care of the division. Rams are one game back as Seattle as of right now. The Rams are 4-0 against spread versus teams with winning records. LA is 4-9 against spread their last 13 in Seattle. The Rams have won five of the last six meetings, averaging 31.8 points per game in those six games. LA has covered the spread in three straight versus the Hawks. The battle for first, like I said, in the NFC West. Big game for both these teams today. Wilson, he's been sacked 41 times this year. The Rams D, they have 44 sacks this year. And I think that's going to give the edge to the Rams in this game. They already beat the Seahawks 23-16 in Week 10 this year. I like the Rams to win and cover the smells. Well, they're underdogs by one and cover that small spread. Philly on the road in Dallas. Battle of two brutal fucking teams suffering injuries and just overall bad play turnovers can't cover any spreads to the worst teams against spread this year Phillies 0 and 5 against spread their last five row games the Eagles are 1 and 6 against spread their last seven games as a favorite Phillies 4 and 9 against spread overall this year the Eagles are 1 and 6 straight up against and against spread on the road this year the Cowboys are 2 and 5 against spread at home this year and 3 and 4 straight up at home Dallas is 4 and 10 against spread this year like I said two of the worst against spread they don't get any worse than that this year when it comes to covering the number the home team is 4 and 0 against spread their last four meetings favorite is 8 and 2 against spread their last 10 so some contradicting stats like usual the under is 6 and 2 their last eight meetings Hertz is averaging 84 and a half rushing yards per game this year. Well, Dallas allows the most rushing yards per game in the NFL this season. That, I think, could be the difference. Jalen Hurts' rushing ability could give the Eagles a small victory today over the much-hated and rivaled Dallas Cowboys. I, I have no faith in either one of these teams this year to do anything. I'm only excited watching Jalen Hurts right, right now. I got two more games to enjoy Hurts and then see what the Eagles are going to do going forward. But anyways, I'll pick the Eagles against small spread because I, I just don't think either of these teams deserves to win. Tennessee on the road at Green Bay. This, to me, is the game of the week now. Two teams averaging 30-plus points. Both hoping to win their divisions. Both hoping to advance in the playoffs and have big seasons beyond the end of December this year. The underdog is 4-1 against spread their last five meetings. The over is 4-1 against spread their last five matchups. PFF's offensive grades rank these two teams as 1-2 and two in the league in offensive grades. Rodgers is 1-2 all-time versus the Titans. The Packers are 8-6 against spread and win by an average of 6.8 points per game. Green Bay is 14-2 straight up at home since 2019, including the playoffs. That's the highest win percentage in that span at home. The Titans are 7-7 seven and seven against spread and win by an average of 5.4 points per game. The over is 10-3-1 in Titans games this season. Titans are tied at 10-4 with the Colts for the AFC South lead. So very important game for both of these teams, even though Green Bay is in the playoffs. Fun stat, Derrick Henry has 100 plus rushing yards in nine straight road games. The second longest such streak since 1970. Derrick Henry is a beast and he should have another 100 plus point road game again tonight against the Packers. Packers almost blew a 21-3 lead to the Eagles last week. That was just brutal play the rest of the way after they jumped out early on Philadelphia. Didn't close the deal. Didn't play that well. Philly's defense, yeah, they played good and it made a huge difference. Them not being on the field or 
having short fields because of errors by the offense that was going on through the first 12 weeks, 13 weeks of the season made a huge difference last week. But the Packers, you got to take care of a bad team like Philly this year, no matter what the circumstances are. Uh, love the Titans. Love the Titans. Definitely in this game. This is the third meeting in NFL history between two teams, both averaging 30 plus points per game in week 14 or later. The road team has won both the previous two meetings and went on to win the Super Bowl that year. Just saying, I like Tennessee to get the job done, not only cover the spread, but win this game outright today. Buffalo at New England, the Monday Nighter Bills are six and a half point road favorites. The Bills are six and oh. Against spread their last six overall, the underdog is 3-0-1 against spread their last four meetings. The road team's 21-8-2 against spread burst. Ten of the Bills' 14 games have gone over the total this year. Bills are 5-2 straight up on the road this season. Patri Patriots are 6-8 against spread this year. Buffalo's 8-0 straight up and 6-2 against spread this year when they allow fewer than 24.3 points. And New England only average, averages 20.6 points per game. Cam Newton has only passed for five DDs this year while tossing 10 interceptions. I think the Bills finally get their first sweep of the Patriots in what I, I feel is the first time since they went to four straight Super Bowls. I could be wrong. I haven't done the research. It just feels that way to me. Buffalo, big win on Monday Night Football over a hated and longtime rival New England. I think they win this by a touchdown, barely covering that spread. That's my Week 16 picks. Peace.